exactly what we're looking for in a relationship. However, we will alter our standards for the relationship. So why do we do all the work of writing down all these standards and such? And then as soon as we get into a relationship, we start altering them. So this is definitely something that I have done. And um, this question made me think about it because, you know, like I said before, sometimes we're not consciously aware of what what standards we put in place, we're just kind of functioning based upon what we've learned over the course of our life. And it's, some, it's kind of like, this is what we do normally and naturally. So um, I wanna talk about that. So we're gonna pray um, just, just before we get started. So dear God, we thank you for this time. We ask Father God that you would be with us, oh God, and give us your wisdom. Help us, all of us, oh God, who are in the need of answers, who need clarity about relationships, who just need your guidance and your wisdom, Father, to help us to maneuver through life and relationships. God, be with us, oh God. Um, touch those who are who are present here, who will watch the replay, and for those uh, those who individuals who have not had an opportunity to even uh, be a part of the Why Wednesday, God, thank you for knowing their hearts. Thank you for um, touching them and hearing their prayers, oh God. I honor you and I praise you and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So why do we alter our standards? Why? Um... Y'all, I'm just a little sluggish. I don't know about y'all. I'm sure I'm assuming the majority of us here are in Texas that will watch this. But for those of you who don't or not familiar with this time zone and us with this uh, spring forward, but I love when the it gets dark later. But I do not like when my body gets sluggish to the point where I want to go to sleep at five o'clock every day. So I even, I look sluggish. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I look sluggish. I can tell I'm sleepy. I'm just sleepy. And, uh, <laughs> but I'm getting my, my regular num number of hours of sleep. But anywho, I digress. So setting a standard. So I looked up a couple of definitions that I wanted to highlight. Number one, standard. Um, it's something that we set up. It definitely reminds me of boundaries, which is really something that I talk about a whole lot in my Building from the Ground Up program. But um, the key word here is um, it measures the value or the quality of a thing. So the standards that we consciously, unconsciously put into place for anything that we commit to. So let's talk about that. That the fact that we're not necessarily just talking about relationships as in romantic relationships. This can cover and, and be reflective of anything that we could commit to, right? So a job, um, any type of contract that we were binding ourselves to, um, but how we value ourselves, um, the quality of ourselves is how we are going to determine what those standards are. And when I looked up the definition of commitment, it's being obligated, obligated or emotionally impelled, being emotionally forced. Sometimes um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use an, an off off type of example. Um, let's say you or someone you know has a job opportunity that is being presented to you, and this job opportunity is a job that is fitting the bill, meaning. This is something that you've been praying for, been waiting for. If the money's looking good, the title is just like, you know, you get your name in lights, you get all these incentives, you travel, you know, you got all the things. And so you take this job because this job is just like everything, basically everything that you've been looking for and what you've been praying for, what you've been waiting on. And you get this job opportunity and then Shortly, shortly after getting into the job, getting acclimated, doing, getting what you're supposed to be getting, then boss man or boss lady starts putting demands on you that are 
pretty much outside of the scope of the job description. But because you are committed to the thing that you've been presented with, the money, the title, the accolades, the incentives, you are committed to that. So therefore, you're willing to kind of lower the standards that you have been set up with when you first started the job. You had some standards like, I'm not going to work after a certain time. I'm not going to neglect my family and my friends. I'm not going to neglect my, my health. I'm going to be committed to me in this new job. But all of a sudden, boss lady, she's like, I need you to stay late. I need you to come in early. I need you to travel four times a week. I need you to give me much more than what you originally thought you were going to be giving in this job. So you are overly committing yourself to this job. In essence, you are losing yourself because as your standards dwindle, you're losing the, who you are. Who you are, who you presented yourself to be when you interviewed is slowly dwindling. You're becoming who they need you to be. So you're losing yourself. And so in that same way, we can commit to a romantic relationship. We can commit to something as far as a contract is concerned or anything that we need or want. And so the key thing here is that I tend to think that we set ourselves up based upon what it is that our, our hearts really long for and desire. So what it, what it is that we want, we pursue it. So much so that we get inundated with the responsibilities of, a, of that commitment, thereby lowering our standards in order to keep it, in order to maintain it. Because whatever it is, is giving us comfort. Whatever it is, is get, making us happy. Whatever it is, is giving us whatever, it's giving us the thing that we longed for. But in the process of that, we're losing ourselves. We are allowing that thing or that person or that relationship to place a demand on us to the point where who we are is not even, like they're not even engaging. At this point, if you're in a relationship and you are lowering your standards, that individual is not even engaging with you. They, that, it's not even the real you. It's the you that, that, it's the you that you think they need you to be. It's the you that you think that relationship requires but it's not the core of who you are. You've lost yourself. If your standards are dwindling, it is you that is dwindling. I wanted to, now that, that's a whole point in and of itself. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna go too deep into this because there is so many different things that I, in directions I could go. But I wanted to bring that, I wanted to bring that to light because I want you guys to think about that. I thought about it. I'm like, wow, you know, um, our standards are is something that it's like a boundary. It should protect us, it should guard us um, to ensure that we are maintaining who we are in this life. And if we really, really, really want what's being presented to us in terms of what's being presented to us with that commitment or that contract we're going to probably do away with some of those standards in order to keep it. But if you're going to keep what's being presented to you, you're going to do it at the expense of losing you. They're not going to engage it. At this point, at that job where you are just, they're calling you in the wee hours of the morning, they're calling you at night, they're expecting for you to work on the weekends, you're traveling, more than you see your family and your friends, they barely, your family barely sees you, but that bank, but that bank account is packed, but your life is glamorous, but that job title makes things look good for you and makes you feel good about yourself. So you become content with all of the things that come with that commitment at the expense of losing you. So your boss is not even engaging with you. It's like a shell of who you are. You're, you're basically a robot now. You're not functioning in the true essence of who you are. I want you to think about that. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging here for a minute because I want you to think about that. Hopefully the person that submitted this question 
is going to view because uh, I want you to think about that um, because that's definitely a reason why we are lowering our standards because we've gotten so comfortable with the thing that we really, really, really want. And so we stay in this box. It's our comfort zone. Whatever your comfort zone, you want it so bad. You feel like you need it so bad that it's worth you losing yourself. That's tough. That's tough to admit to. But it's, if you think about it, and I hope, hope that you can relate and so much so that you're leaving comments and agreeing or even if you don't agree, I don't expect everybody to agree with me, okay? But if you understand where I'm coming from, or you can relate to this. I really want to see some engagement. Um, to share it with me. Share what you feel and what you're thinking. Um, if you have an experience, share it in the comments as well. Um, the other portion that I wanted to bring up is the whole thing about value. So my question is, I know it's like, but why, but why Wednesday I'm asking y'all questions? I'm asking myself questions. What influences or who influences your value? Because I think that's another reason why we end up settling, lowering our standards because it really depends on who's determining our value because our value lends itself to the type of standards that we put in place. But when was the last time? I know it's been a minute for me to really go back and write a list of all the standards I have in place for all the commitments that I wanna make or have made, but write down those standards. And once you write down those standards, go a step further and ask yourself who influenced this standard? Who influenced this this particular boundary that I've set for myself? Was it, I made a list. Was it you? I said, I'm valued. Um, my friend said, uh, my circumstances or my past has said, my self-esteem has said, my mama said, my daddy said, my mentor said, and finally, and most importantly, my God said, who influences how you have defined your value? We talked about this at the purpose party as well. Who determines who you are, your identity? But in this case, who influences how you see yourself, how you value yourself? You want to like sit down and think about that. I'm going to go back and do it. Um, but sit down and really think about like who influenced me to think like that? Who influenced me to feel that way about myself? And so once you come into that, into that understanding and you obviously have to be honest, like be just genuinely as, as genuinely honest as you possibly can, because that's what's going to help you to redirect or to redefine your value. Because if it's your circumstances that determined your value, because maybe just maybe you had a very, very difficult past, um, maybe your childhood was really traumatic. And so you might have heard people say certain things about you as a child and that you've carried that throughout your young adult life and your adult life. And so now that has um, unconsciously you are being defined by what was spoken or by, uh, by the experience that you had. And so now that value is based upon that. And so when you get into a relationship or you get into a level of commitment, that's how you determine, well, you know, I really don't. I'm really not as good as a as a girlfriend because of what I went through in my past. So I can I can lower my standards for this relationship because I'm not as good anyway. I'm not good at that anyway, so I'm going to lower my standard because that's what influenced that particular area of your what you value or how you value yourself. And so you do have to ask yourself who influences Yes, Jennifer, God, absolutely. And so for those of us now, Jennifer, if you're still watching, um, when it comes to 
if you have gone through this, this exercise or this particular challenge and you've written down all of the things that you feel are, are that make you valuable, what, what your values are and then who influence those values. If the common denominator is God, you are definitely in a good place, 100% in a better place. However, I want to add to that, that if you don't believe that for yourself, see, I think God can, listen, I read the Bible and I can, I can rehearse and declare the word of God all day, every day. But unless I believe it as truth, it's not really going to it's not really going to be reflective in how I determine my value. So if God says, you are perfect, you are beautiful, you are the apple of my eye, I can say it all day, but do I believe it? Is it really my truth? So yeah, I can say, I am the apple of God's eye, so therefore my guy, whoever I wanna date, has to view me as such. I can say that, or I can make a demand on that, but do I really believe it enough to stick with it? Because then here goes this beautiful young man who is in my life and he is, you know, making me just melt. I am losing myself. And the very thing that I've been longing for, to be a wife, to be a, a mother, to be whatever it is that I want to be in this relationship, it, it, it comes to fruition. But that relationship starts pulling from me and taking from me. And then those stand, that standard that I thought I had about, I am the apple of God's eye. And then he starts disrespecting me. And then he starts talking to me any kind of way. And then he starts not coming home or not being present, not being available. And I'm taking it because I really, really, really want this. Remember what I just said a minute ago? What we want and desire is what we're going to pursue. And sometimes we're going to be okay with lowering standards in order to keep it. Because it's what we really, really want. So because I really want this in this relationship, I'm going to devalue myself, even though God has already spoken his truth. Even though my father, my, my earthly father, has spoken well over me. And I, and I heard it and I repeated it. But the moment that that thing comes into my life, it says, I want, I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take everything I can from you simply because it can and you allow it because you want to be fulfilled in that area. You want to be comfortable. You want to be happy. You want to feel whatever it is that you desire and long to feel and you're willing to lose your self and your value in order to keep it. So the question is, do you actually believe what God has spoken over your life? I honestly believe all of us need to continue to rehearse and remind ourselves of what we believe from the word of God, from the, from the mouth of God, and meditate on it until we actually live it every day, until it can be seen by the naked eye that whoever sees me they, it just, it's just protruding out of me. Like this light is, is shining on my face. That's how I want the truth of what God has spoken over my life to look like. I want people to say, wow, you know, you really are walking in that confidence. You are walking in that truth. You are walking that out. You are acting it out. You act like it. You make decisions based upon it. Surely, but slowly, but surely the commitments that you make will be reflected on what you truly believe as truth about you. That's why we lower our standards because we really don't believe the truth. We really don't believe what is actually the light and the truth. We believe the darkness. We believe the lies of the enemy. But at some point we have to come into a, the knowledge of who we are based upon who God has, has spoken over us how God has spoken over us. His truth is our, his word is our bond. And once we get to that point where we walk that out, we live that out. So I want, 
I want my future, I want my husband to see that truth in me even before we even become a couple, like whatever. I want him to see that reverberating out of me. That way, there's no there's no reason for you to disrespect me. There's no re reason for you to manipulate me. You have no excuse because you see the truth and you will have to, you will have to commit based upon the standards that I've set in place. The boundaries that I've put in place are bonded by the word of God. And if you can't meet those expectations, I'm not even going to waste my time. Y'all, listen, if y'all have listened to me as long as y'all have listened to me over the last couple of months or two or, or, or three, then y'all know that I am very mindful of my circle. I am extremely mindful. And I, and I have to be even more mindful about what I allow in me and what I speak over myself, what, what I allow to be spoken over my life, what I speak to over myself. What I believe, we have to be stewards over what we believe. We have to be mindful of what we believe. All this, everything that I talk about every single Wednesday, I am convicted of it because we don't spend enough time re-evaluating what we think and what we believe, which is why on the day before yesterday, I made this post, or was it yesterday? Whatever day it was. How important moments are. We rush through life so much and we miss moments and opportunities when God reminds us of things. And sometimes we need to stop long enough to think about where we are, where we are mentally, where we are emotionally, because God can speak to us in those moments and help us to uh, focus on something that actually needs our attention. We can we can eventually um, we can start ignoring those things because it's just it's just minor. I, you know that's just minor. I don't need to focus on that. But it's hedged upon your future and how you're moving and how you progress in life and how how successful and stable your relationships can be. So we absolutely need to be in tune with ourselves in every single moment. Every single moment matters. And if we treat that sensitively and we focus on ourselves as, as frequently as possible, as much as you eat, as much as you drink water, as much as you go to the bathroom, as much as possible throughout the day, take time to just relinquish a space for God to speak and intervene and show you something. Journal it, record it, do whatever you feel like it's, that you, you're, you're comfortable doing so that you can be in tune with that. Because that's, that's where the relief comes because you're like, wow, the revelation comes, the breakthroughs come and the moments, the moments that we miss all day, every day because we're wrapped up in what life constantly forces us to have to endure but I'm putting what what the world makes me think that I need to put my attention on I'm putting that on the back burner because what God has to say to me is much more valuable as a matter of fact what God has to say to me is what's going to help me to face that thing and know how to do it and how to maneuver through that thing or get past it so I said a mouthful and you know I could keep going um, got a couple of people that looks like viewing. So if you have any questions, you can ask them. But like I said, the two things that we want to, that we want to focus on is, um, recognizing the value in you and then determining who influenced that value. And once you've, once you've determined that, then you de you decide, do you believe it for yourself? Like really, truly believe it. So much so that it just comes out of your every being. You're the essence of who you are. I believe that I am the apple of God's eye. Then y'all, whoever, 
you should be able to see that I believe that in how I speak, in how I act, in my lifestyle, how I treat people. You should be able to experience my belief system and just how I maneuver through life. That's how you know you believe because it just comes out of you naturally, organically, genuinely, not forced. And so when the right man or the right woman, or just in general, when the man, when the man comes and the woman comes into your life, they're gonna just see the standards up front and either you buy in or you buy out. Either you in or you're out. That sounds like the America's Next Top Model, don't it? Either you are in or you are out because my standards will not change. And the last thing I wanted to share is, um, can your standards, I'm sorry, can your value, the value that you have determined, your value, okay, can it be compromised? Before you commit to anything, these are the questions you need to be asking yourself. Can it be compromised? Which means that this is my value, and if I get into a relationship with somebody, can someone cause me to compromise that value to the point where my standards are obliterated? Can someone change the value that has been set in place? Can anyone change it? Can anyone make it make you compromise it? If they can, it's not it. That is not the value. That is not a value. That is an expectation. I heard the Holy Spirit say, that is an expectation. A standard is a bar. That is one of the words that it's used to define or describe a standard. It is a bar. And a bar cannot be removed. A bar is where it's supposed to be. That fence outside, that bar is where it's supposed to be. It should not, it cannot be compromised. It cannot be moved and shuffled. That's what kind of standard you have to put in place. If your standards can be moved and changed and compromised, it's an expectation. So you have to redefine who you are first by determining who is influencing that. If it's your if it's your, your past, if it's your mom and your dad, your your friends, your coworkers, your mentor, your your very self-esteem. If it's based upon those things, it still has to be measured by whether it can be compromised. Can it be compromised? Can it be changed? then if it can, it is not a standard that you want to go into a relationship or any commitment with. Jennifer says, as a man or woman thinks in his heart, so is he or she. What is, what is your truth? What do you believe? That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> the, um, that's all I got. <laughs> um, you are more than welcome to post questions here, comments here. Once you watch the replay, just let me know that you're watching the replay. Um, if you have any questions, I'll definitely keep keep here. Uh, keep jump, jumping back over here to look and see if there's any questions. And I'll definitely take those into consideration to answer or provide whatever insight I can provide. But that's all I got. That is all I got. Um, I hope this was something that was helpful. Hopefully you take this to heart. And um, hopefully we all reevaluate and do, do these kinds of exercises for our, with and for ourselves so that we can really have a confidence in what we're committing to and what we are allowing or not allowing in our lives. But at this point, um, we're going to set standards that are based upon the truth that God has determined for us. And we're going to know without a shadow of a doubt that it cannot be compromised. It cannot be compromised. So that's all I got for you. Thanks for viewing. Jennifer, appreciate you. Love you, girl. 
um, let me know if you're replay, watching the replay and um, we'll pull another question probably later on this week and I'll give you guys a heads up to let you know what we'll be talking about next week. But well, I love you all so much and um, have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.